Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is the Huxworks 30 caliber HXQD TI suppressor. If you've already recognized this, it's because uh, Huxworks used to be called OSS suppressors. They've done a name change for their particular reasons. This is the generation two of their very well performing uh, 30 cal suppressor. This one incorporates the flash hiding end cap, which they had already incorporated into their 556 offering uh, suppressors. So I already have this suppressor and I've already done a video on the suppressor, the Gen 1 of the TI. This is the Gen 2 under the new name of Huxworks. And what we really wanted to see is, is there gonna be any significant loss of performance? Even though it seems to be, um, to the shooter's eye, to looking at it, the only significant change is adding that flash hider to the end of the suppressor. If you're not familiar with Huxworks previously, like I said, OSS, so we, you know, get some uh, some familiarity there before we just become, you know, we don't have to say this used to be that. Uh, everybody just knows them as Huxworks going forward. They use a flow-through technology with a helical feed for the, for the muzzle gases, the, over, the actual explosive gases that come out of the barrel, to change the overall dramatic performance of the suppressor and provide some added benefits that you don't get from other types of traditional baffle stack or monocore type suppressors. And it's something that I've really come to like a lot because there's some guns that are very particular in how they like to be suppressed or if they like to be suppressed at all. And generally those those types of firearms, like the CZ Brent is a really good example, it does not like high or low pressure traditional baffle stack or monocore suppressors. But if you throw an OSS on it, it runs like a champ and you lose some of the feeling that the gun is trying to beat itself to death. Um, SCAR is another example. I love my SCARs, my SCAR 20, I've got a SCAR 16. They perform excellent and have much better recoil, felt recoil pulse based on the gas pressure with an OSS on them than they do with any other suppressor I've used. So even though this isn't a dramatic change, it's not a dramatic upgrade from the previous generation, I'm gonna go ahead and do a 2000 round review process on it because I figured, you know what, I'm gonna shoot 2000 rounds anyway at some point, so why don't I just do it with the suppressor on there and make sure I film it so I can give you guys a video on the latest version and also basically introducing you uh, to one of the first cans that they're producing as Huxworks. And I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. The English language being what it is, I read it and I feel like that's the only way to say it, unless maybe some letters are silent, but I don't get that feeling. So through the review process, I use it on 762 by 39 I also use it on 300 Blackout Super and Subsonic, and of course, 308, getting a really good feel for the performance that first 500 rounds. It gave me what I expected from my OSS suppressors, because like I said, I already have the previous generation of this suppressor. Um, the flash hider is definitely worth mentioning right off the bat. One of the first things I did once I got it, uh, made sure I checked the zero on the guns I was gonna be using the suppressor on, and then I went out and shot it a whole bunch at night. And the flash hider does what flash hiders do. One of the things that we get from suppressors, um, any type of suppressor is gonna have this to a varying degree. Uh, you may have a first round pop muzzle flash. Uh, hot gas pushing all that cold gas out causes things to happen. Another thing that happens on suppressors is if you you know shoot three or four or five quick rounds, like when I say quick, I mean like uh, more than one round a second, more than one round every half a second. So pop, 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 or quicker. Uh, that volume builds up in the gun, that gas volume builds up in the suppressor, and then I get a flash pop. And it happens every four rounds, every three or four rounds, sometimes it's every other round with some suppressors. I wanted to see if that flash hider was gonna do its job, and it definitely does. The muzzle signature is significantly reduced over this muzzle signature that really honestly wasn't that bad on the previous gen generation of the TI-30 cal can. Sound attenuation is what I would expect from a Huxworks suppressor. Some may feel that because it's a departure from traditional suppressor design that it's gonna dramatically change the way the suppressor sounds. And of course, opinions are a thing. And my hearing isn't the greatest, but the suppressor is doing what I want it to do, which is suppress the sound of the gunshot and not affect dramatically in any way the performance of the firearm. 
So from a sound attenuation standpoint during the review process, uh, hot or cold, the can sounds fantastic. Especially shooting subsonic ammunition through it, you really get an appreciation for that performance. Uh, and adding the flash cap to it definitely gives a little bit more peace of mind when using it in, like I said, like a lower or reduced light environment where you're worried about that muzzle signature. Of course, no review is complete without a burn down. Is there any dramatic changes to the suppressor? Is there gonna be anything that's gonna be affected uh, coming from the previous generation? So I wanted to do a burn down, which is 500 rounds as quickly as possible to see if I can identify any issues that I wouldn't notice with 500 rounds over a much longer period of time. So four or five minutes versus like four or five days, weeks, months, years. So here is your 500 round burn. As expected, as I expected going into it, even though I try to remain objective as possible, I, because there aren't too many dramatic changes to the overall suppressor at all, I was expecting the same performance I saw with the Gen 1 suppressor, which is 500 rounds of boring accuracy, boring sound attenuation, and even as the suppressor got dangerously hot, uh, the materials did what the materials do, the suppressor performed like the suppressor should perform. So 500 round burn down, I didn't have any issues first to last round. Uh, one thing definitely worth mentioning, and this is something that the burn down helps identify um, when it comes to suppressors anyway, is how good is the mounting system? Is the can going to come kind of loose? Is it going to get somewhat loose? Because I've done reviews in the past where I've had to retighten the suppressor every 75 to 100 rounds during the, the review, or I'm sorry, during the burn down. Their mounting system is very simplistic. I thread it onto one of their muzzle devices. I make sure it's locked down nice and tight. I put a little extra crank on it, a little extra torque, a little extra tension, and then I shoot 500 rounds as quickly as possible and the pressure doesn't come loose. That's kind of an, a testament to their mounting system. Uh, also, I can then let that gun cool down. I can go home, throw it in the safe, forget about it for a week until I go to the range again, and the suppressor comes right off. You can't really ask for more than that in a very simplistic, very simplistically designed interface, which is basically just screwing one thing onto another thing without adding excess parts. There are advantages to other types of ratcheting type QD systems and things like that based on the pressure relationship and the suppressor. If you have a very high pressure can, it's a really good idea to add an additional level of, level of safety in your mounting system, which is where some collar systems come from. I can't speak for every suppressor company, but at least some suppressor companies add a that extra layer of protection to keep suppressors from going down range. With the OSS flow through system, you don't really have to worry about that, and I really appreciate it. Then I just worked through another thousand rounds. Uh, not much to say in that regard. On the various firearms that I use it on, subsonic, supersonic ammunition, the sound attenuation stayed good, the performance stayed good, the mounting stayed good, and the flash hiding cap fl hides flash. So there are some, I guess, boring, reliable aspects to that. I, I feel like and you're starting to see it, a lot of other suppressor companies are starting to pursue similar avenues of performance. So while when OSS first came out and now they've become Huxworks, people would look at flow-through type design and they didn't trust it, as they shouldn't, as you should verify something before you trust it anyway, but they just felt like, well, you know, it's a gimmick or you're just trying to be different to stand out. Uh, but now you're starting to see other suppressor companies quietly introduce their own versions of very similar performance. So there must be something to this flow-through system. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with traditional baffle designs or, or monocores, but that also means that there's something to this system if other suppressor companies have noticed a demand for it, be it from military or be it from the open market, the civilian market, the citizen market, to say, hey, I'd like this suppressor, I wish you made, well, I like the way this suppressor works, I wish you guys made one because I like your brand. So you're starting to see that as well. But speaking just for the HXQDTI, uh, this is just a, a, a another good, it's not a needless improvement. Uh, it definitely adds a little extra degree of peace of mind when it comes to, 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 to signature reduction, while it maintains the overall performance that we had with the previous generation of the, uh, the HXQD. 
Um, I'm excited to see where they're going to go from here with, with suppressor design, but I feel like it's probably going to be small incremental changes based on years of experience and feedback from the shooting community, which is kind of a good way to do things. If you're doing something right, there's no real necessarily necessary need to fix it, except for, like I said, small little incremental uh, adjustments in, in performance mounting. I noticed that they've, they've definitely released more muzzle devices recently, different profiles of muzzle devices, and I appreciate that. I do like their muzzle devices, but hey, there's room for improvement. Go ahead and improve it. There was room for improvement on the previous generation of the suppressor, so they improved it, and all they really did was add that, that, that uh, flash hider. But it's awesome, and it's built in, and it's integral, and I don't have to worry about taking it off or losing it or mixing it up with other parts. Um, would I like to see changeable end caps in the future? That'd be cool. But we're just talking about this suppressor in regards to did they do anything dramatically different? Do you need to replace your Gen 1? Absolutely not. But if you don't have an OSS, this is definitely the one to get if you're looking for a 30 cal suppressor. Uh, they make a bunch of different suppressors and a bunch of different sizes and calibers and materials, so definitely check that out. But if you're looking for a really high quality 30 cal suppressor and you worry about you have one of those guns that is a little bit finicky when it comes to suppressor pressure and performance, OSS will solve the ailment on most of the guns, at least in my experience, that are out there that are picky about the pressure suppress the pressure type of pressure the suppressor generates during the cycle of fire. So uh, if you don't own a Huxworks, you should. I'm Eric Cowan Stage Dynamics, train accordingly.